Okay, we can add Marsha in. I can see you, Marsha. Just going to add you into the chat. Okay. So. Okay, are you there? Can you can you hear me? Okay. Yep, I can. Yep. Okay, great. First off, thanks for doing this. I know that we right. back and forward in the comments. A lot of people don't agree to do this, so I, I respect that. No, you I, do. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Okay, I'm great. not after uh, the, the slanging match at all. No, I'm happy to be completely civil and just have yeah, a, exactly. a good chat. So just yeah. to give people a, a watching a bit of background, we've had a bit of back and forth in, in some comment sections about horse riding, ethics of mm -hmm. horse domestication and stuff like that, and had some disagreements. So we thought we'd hop online, have a mm -hmm. chat, have a proper chat, yeah. and see what each other's opinions are and... You know, whether we agree on anything, disagree, or, or, or where it goes. Yeah, yeah so, that, that's absolutely fine by me. Okay, great stuff. Well, um, as, as, you know, you're, you're, you're the guest here, um, I'll, I'll let you start off. Obviously, you, you know my, my opinions. I, you know, I, I don't think that we should be riding horses. I don't think um, horse domestication is a, is a positive thing or, or we should be continuing to, to breed them. But, you know, what, what would you say your opinion on this is? Um, using the term to uh, break them in is very, very old fashioned. Yeah, I know it's called backing now. Is that correct? That's what the more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Many, many years ago, the term uh, to break them in actually meant to break their spirits. Right. So then they would. Uh, yeah, kind of give in to them. Be, be, yeah, um, yeah. Be, be kind of numb to, uh, yeah. So, years, sorry, if you can hear background noise, I've got some kittens there going. Oh, that's okay, no worries. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, years have obviously gone by, um, and the, the term that a lot of us, most of us, use now is to back or start horse yeah um which is basically um it takes quite a long time uh you make sure the horse is obviously mature enough uh different breeds mature at different ages um and just getting them used to things um kind of like a something being around their head like a bridle or whatever, um, to like Hessian sacks with the strap either side of their, their back so they get their used to something kind of rubbing against their side, etc. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I guess where I would go with there is do, do we need to do this and can they truly consent to what, what we are doing? I mean, there is a process in getting them used to to riding them and if it's an unnecessary thing like how do we justify um doing this to them what would you say to that okay um guess they can consent if a I mean, horse how in... would you say they consent just to, just to stick on that point first you know okay if a horse didn't want you on its back you wouldn't be on its back but do you not think that we condition them to allow us to do that? I mean, I've watched lots of videos of horses being backed and generally they don't want people on their back initially until they are that's continued not, to... That's you know, not if it's done properly. I mean, would you, would you say that's that's true consent though or is it just something that they, they have to yeah. live with? I mean, and, you know, how do we gauge that it is true consent? Like I said, if a horse didn't want you on its back, it wouldn't allow you. Um, if it's done properly and the, there's a massive, uh, you can build such a massive trust with a horse, huge. Um, they kind of look after you, you kind of look after them. Um, it's, yeah, there's, it's, it's not, yeah, it's a consent thing. But if a horse didn't want you on its back, you wouldn't be on its back. I mean, there is an argument that the reason they allow it is through a kind of learned helplessness. The fact that that's just what they've been brought up to do. They they, they, have, they don't really have an option. And so they, they just go along with it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they want to or yeah, anything and like that. Yeah, that. Go, and that goes back to breaking in 
or backing or starting. Um, for instance, a friend of mine had, um, she was at Exeter Horse Sales and there was a horse there and it was literally downtrodden, covered in shit, um, no, uh, uh, it was so fierce, it was ridiculous and it was literally going for the Nakamau. Right. Um, my friend just could not leave that horse there. I think she bought it for, I don't know, £110 or something. Uh, now, this horse was completely fearful, had hated humans, huge distrust. Um, got it back home, started work on her. Well, not work, but gaining her trust, which uh, was like hours in a stable with um, like a wooden pole with a rubber glove on it. Right. To just try and... And now this horse has ended up being um, an advocate, to be fair, for abused horses and how you can gain their trust. Yeah, I mean, I, I would totally agree that we can we can gain animals' trust, whether that's a horse or a dog or a, or a cat or anything like that. It's just whether, you know, we can actually consent to them riding on their back and, and why we do it in the first place i mean as far as i'm concerned it's a it's an unnecessary action it's very clear that horses can be fit and healthy w without being ridden at all um the action is more for the human's benefit than the the horse's benefit and if we look at some of the science as well um i, I don't tend to go to because i don't think it's that important anyway but i mean there are you know, studies that have shown that there can be damage to the horse from uh, from riding. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, wh whether there is or whether there isn't, um, it's just a, a strange situation that we think it's okay to um, okay. sit on an, another animal's back um, mm -hmm. for no real reason with, without any true consent. I mean, and we only seem to do this to a select number of animals. We seem to do it to, um, to horses, camels, elephants, but we, we you know for some reason we're, we're we're against riding elephants, um, and you know I mean guess camels, they kind of fall into the horse thing. But why is it that it's okay for us to do it to a horse, but people frown upon doing it to any other animal? And why don't we do it to any other animal? I think that would be okay. a question worth asking. Okay, so um, on the question of uh, keeping a horse fit and healthy, um, you need to um like a human basically if you sat there just eating all day you're going to come obese and then you are going to become quite unwell and that's actually the same with with horses but there's, so, there's a whole load of horses across the world which have never been ridden they're not yeah, being but ridden we're, we're talking about enough stands no, I'm talking about, about I'm talking about that there's a, there's a group on uh, Facebook for a start called the uh, non ridden equine, uh, which is full of all people that do not ride their horse for, for various reasons. Um, there's some people that don't ride them for ethical reasons. There are some people who don't ride them um, because th they physically can't, or the, the horse physically mm -hmm. can't, or there are various reasons in there. But it, it, it's very clear that horses don't require this and there are other things we can do we can walk you can line them you can lunge them um you can do you know uh, agility exercises liberty um there's plenty of things we can do to keep a horse healthy and if, if we look at horses in the world majority of the time they're still around grazing um they're not running around all the time yeah, wild, 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 wild horses domesticated horses are a completely different thing but what would be the difference about them? Why would we need to do something like riding to a domestic horse, but we wouldn't need to do it to a wild horse? What would be the difference? Well, a, wild, a wild pony, let's take like maybe a Dartmoor pony or uh, maybe a Mustang in America. Their grazing is extremely sparse. Uh, so their metabolisms are completely different. Um, it's a completely uh different sorry can't shut up sorry um completely different um uh animal from a domesticated horse so you take maybe say a welsh section d 
compared to uh, a Dartmoor Hill Pony. It's two completely different animals. Well, I'd agree there's there's differences. Um, I don't mm -hmm. see where the, the the riding comes into play when there are so many horses um, that aren't being ridden in captivity and that they're doing fine. Um, doesn't that show that riding isn't a necessity for these horses? Like Hillside Sanctuary, for example, they've got over 300 horses. That they're yeah. not ridden and they're all okay and they're all healthy. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not though. They're not all rideable horses. Um, a lot of them have got uh, problems. That's why they've been surrendered. So they can't be ridden. But not all of them. You, you couldn't say, you couldn't blanket say that every horse that isn't ridden has problems. I think there'd be a lot of people that would, that would argue against that point. Uh, if you gave me a, a horse from Hillside that was healthy and could be ridden, then it begs the question, then why was the horse given up? Well, horses are given up for, I mean, that's another subject on, on its own. We you know why, why horses are given up. Like, my, my, as I mentioned before, my, my, my partner has two horses, one of them that has had eight owners. Um, so, you know, we know very well that horses are just given up by people when they're not, you know, well, for various reasons, could be financial reasons, could be just because they're bored of them. We don't know. But I don't think that it can be blanket said that a, an unridden horse is, is going to be unhealthy when there are plenty of people. I mean, even in this group, I, I put a, a message in there to ask mm -hmm. about the different things they do. I've had 187 responses yeah. uh, from people today um, mm -hmm. saying that my horses are fine. We don't ride them. They're absolutely healthy. We walk them. We do, you know, line we do um what's the long line uh, tracks then. yeah long lining they you know tracks all that kind of things um yeah. and they're all and they're all funny even someone even put a picture of um some of their weight loss journeys from horses that they would got that were on you know overweight and from not riding them they've they've managed to lose weight as well so i i'm not sure i can be convinced by the argument that the riding is a necessity mm -hmm. okay um, get long lining, etc. It doesn't get the horse's heart rate up. Um, that's essential, and like muscle wastage, muscle lost. Um, a horse isn't like um, a dog. I mean, I've, I've one of my my niece is she's actually vegan, right. and she's completely slated me for having horses. Um, when I have explained to her that actually my horses are very, very well looked after and this, that and the other, um, maybe, um, just my opinion, uh, people aren't giving you the other side of when you're not exercising a horse properly, they get a disease called like laminitis, which can then rotate the pedal bone which is in their hoof, mm. and they end up being put to sleep. But could you actually provide any solid evidence that riding is a necessity? Like, are there, are there any studies? Are there, is there anything where you, you could show us that confirms that horses re require riding? Because it's not something that I can find, and it's not something I, I think exists, if I'm honest. Okay. Yep, I've had um, horses before that can't be ridden. Say so they've been put out to pasture. One developed uh, laminitis. Uh, the only thing you could do was basically shut in a, a, a stable for 23 hours a day. The hay they had had to be soaked for 24 hours, so there was no nutrients in it at all. Um, and that one ended up being... But wouldn't this, be, wouldn't, wouldn't this be purely anecdotal, though? Like, th th that's just a, a personal story of a horse that you know, obviously didn't, for whatever reason, do well. And we don't know what the, you know, the, the full story with that individual horse is. But like I'm kind of trying to get to is saying it as a blanket statement. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't think it's true. Um, I don't think okay. that there is any evidence that horses require riding or they can't be healthy um, without riding because there are so many horses out there doing absolutely fine. And um 
yeah i mean I, this is i mean this is why i'm asking if there was anything kind of more solid you could provide a, a study well, that for, says for, for, like. 40 years experience I think, again that's i mean my partner uh her mother has been she's kept horses since she was a child as well so she's got plenty of experience um i wouldn't call myself a pro but i i did ride for a while when i was younger uh for close family friends had had horses as well so i mean i, I definitely wouldn't say I, i'm as knowledgeable as the kind of husbandry as, as yourself obviously if you've been around horses every day you're probably going to know more about that side than me but um i, I can't see any evidence and there's and there's a lot of people like i said and i've posted in these groups um that that disagree they disagree with, with, with what you're saying and that's why i was asking yeah, if there's any that's fine so that's kind of like a, a difference of opinion yeah i mean if, if, if we want to leave uh, agree to disagree with that then I'm absolutely fine. Yeah, that's, you know, like... that's, that's kind of a, a complete difference of opinion. Um, when we were having that uh, bit of a uh, two and a three banter the other day, and um, I said, "Have you ever asked a horse if it's happy?" And you said, "No, nah, you can't." Or, well, I said, God. "Have you ever asked a horse?" And yeah, I, know, I have. No, but you, you, yeah, you have. But had, you, um... you, ha you haven't because it's not possible. We have to be realistic. <laughs> There's no science that we can talk to horses. We have to be realistic. Oh, you you really think that? Oh yeah, it's a hundred percent positive. I mean, can can you show me a study that says we can talk to horses? There's basic communication, like Don't we can do even with dogs. Have to have a study. Um, my big boy Mouse, seventeen to mm. middleweight hunter. Um, he was a he was a rescue case basically, um, and he was presenting all sorts of issues. Um, I couldn't get to the bottom of. I had a vet um, full check over teeth, physio for his back, everything. Um, the only thing that came up when I bought him, I had him vetted by a vet, and by chance the vet said he's got a slight detached retina in his. Uh, right eye mm -hmm. um, but I bought him anyway because I felt sorry for the lad anyway he presented with lots and lots of problems ended up putting a couple of people in hospital um, so I then it's actually my, my old hairdresser and I was at my wits end and I said don't know what to do and she said look I've got someone that can help so I was like, yeah, whatever. Everyone's an expert, aren't they? I should know. Her friend was actually um, an animal whisperer. Right. I was like, okay, I'll give the time of day. Uh, so this woman knew absolutely nothing. All she knew was his name was Mouse and he was seven years old. So she came to the stables. We started walking up the track um, towards the field. And she hadn't even spotted the herd. And she said, it's his eye. It's his right eye. Do you know anything about that? And I was like that. Um, and basically, he was screaming to, to talk to her. Um, and yeah, it was his eye, basically. But wouldn't we um, have to admit that, again, this is... This is purely anecdotal. I mean, I haven't seen any solid scientific evidence to say that horse whisperers are yeah, but you're scientifically not accurate. Yeah, but well, you're not going to. Well, if it was provable and it could be done in. Yeah, but how are you going to prove it if it's in like a, a kind of like a, a an animal whisperer kind of science? Well, it, it should be provable. It should be um, repeatable, um, repeatable experiments that can prove the accuracy of of people that do this claims. <laughs> Have you ever spoken to a medium or spoke to... Well, yeah, like... as, as a mother who is a um, psychic clairvoyant, I am very familiar with that kind of stuff. And I'm also very sceptical about a lot of things as well. Um, yeah, you know, so, I... so maybe you should take that and kind of... Because I also had a different person to see one of my other mares, Maple. And, um, yeah, and, like, my mum came in as well. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, I have spoke to my horses. I do communicate with them. 
Um, I mean, so, I'd, yeah, I'd have to say you. Obviously, you can't you can't prove that the horse whisperer. I remember telling a girl that I used to work with, and she's like, "Oh my god!" And she said, "I spoke to my husband, and he said, no, there must be records somewhere or veterinary records.'" And I'm like, "No." But, but this, this is the thing: we're, we're we're basing a lot of what we're talking about currently on assumptions and unprovable okay. things. And okay. the way I, the way the way I would think about this is if we can't prove that this is a thing then we are making an assumption that it's okay without realizing and mm -hmm. that you could be doing something that your horse doesn't want you to do in fact there was an article um by an equine behaviorist in canada who actually wrote an article uh, mainly talking about the fact that your horse probably doesn't like you riding them as much as you think they do because of mm -hmm. these kind of assumptions that, that, that we make we kind of think we can we think it's okay because they don't chuck us off but that doesn't mean that they want to that just means that they're in a situation where th they're not saying no and there's plenty of situations where people have done things which they don't want to do um, in situations and they haven't said no that doesn't necessarily mean automatically that that's an ethical thing that yeah, we're doing no, you understand okay. where i'm coming from there no 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 absolutely completely agree um i've known some owners who are um how can I put it? Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, yeah, if you need to, go for it. Owners that are absolutely thick as shit. And they just haven't got a, a realisation of um, the way the horse is communicating with them. And yeah, some of them are shut down um, with pain. Hmm. Because they are, because they get used to a fat lump sat on their back. Um, who, yeah, who's thick as shit, really, with an ill-fitting saddle. So yes, that can be the case. I'm yeah. hands on admit to that. I've, I've phoned the RSPCA. I mean, I think me. we can both agree there that you know there are. 100% cases with yeah people that shouldn't be riding horses at all because they're yeah either, you know, there's some they even bought out um it must have been about I don't know nearly 10 years ago and it was actually that um judges in the show ring could kick people out of the class because these people were like too fat to ride these horses right and I, I've, I've seen that, believe me. Um, but there is a huge majority of people. Um, I've got a friend, she's um, an eventer. I mean, her horses are pampered. If they didn't want to do it, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Uh, personally, for me, I don't agree with horse racing. Mm-hmm. The reason being, they are, we'll go back to the broken in or started, they're actually broken in at, say, the age of two, sometimes, if not that. Yeah. And pushed and pushed and pushed till they, they break something or basically they're kind of like fucked by the age of three, three and a half. Tendons gone, you name it. Yeah. So no, I don't agree with that. I mean, we, we can totally agree there. I'm completely yeah. against horse racing. I think it's a yeah. No, I can't sport. stand it. And yeah. people are like, oh, you're horsey. You don't like horse racing. Mm -mm. No, you, no. You, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are into horses that you know that, that yeah. yeah that don't agree with racing. I can't and... be doing with that. No, I can't be doing with that. But yeah. when you've got kind of like um, a friend of mine, he produces eventers. Uh, one of hers now is like 19 years old. He lives a completely retired uh, life. He wasn't pushed. Um, you shouldn't particularly start a horse till they're at least three because of like bone development. You shouldn't even start to try and pop a horse over a fence till they're at least five because of bone development. I think getting important thing we should really discuss here is that if like if if i'm right uh, that horses don't need to be ridden okay mm -hmm. if, if they can okay. get enough exercise okay 
would there actually be any justification whatsoever to be riding them? Okay, so how do you propose to... Sorry, I'm just trying to... Set my That's okay. Phone. Um, um, how do you propose that they be exercised? Well, if they're given enough space and then they're with other horses, chances are they'll probably play anyway. You can also do things like putting water and food on other sides of the field so they get enough walking. If they're not being trained for anything like eventing or racing or any sort of thing like that, generally they don't need that level of fitness to be happy and healthy anyway. And um, like I said, you could also walk them, you can lunge them, you can line them, you can you know, agility things with them, you, you can play with horses. There's, there's plenty of things they can do um, that don't involve riding them. Um, so, okay, so, so walking a horse does not get its heart rate up, um, doesn't burn any calories, uh, long lining, um, that doesn't... Well, I mean, that, you, you could run with your horses in the field. Why couldn't you do that? Okay, run with them in the field. Um, horses get bored of being in that same environment all the time. So if I ran, and obviously you've seen my um, my Facebook profile picture, and that was me and our section D, Mia, lovely girl. Um, and I used to run her out shows and stuff. It's not giving them enough exercise, and then you but have why? To... I mean, the horses that we have here are in. But what Large fields. Um, I, 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 I couldn't tell you the breeds. I'm not that familiar with the breeds, but they are out there with a number of other horses in these fields. Mm -hmm. um, some of the horses, I think yep. for the females, there's about maybe 25, 30 other horses with them. Um, yep. And they just run around and most of them aren't, a lot of them aren't ridden there. And Yep. So you, you need to um, kind of let me know what breed they are, what ages they are. But yeah, I, I mean, I guess this comes to a, a, another subject when you're talking about different breeds is mm -hmm. that personally the domestication of the horse initially was to me a, a, an unethical act we shouldn't have ever taken ownership of an, an animal another being uh, to mm -hmm. then be breeding these animals into captivity uh, when they are a wild animal that deserves to live their own lives, not dictated by humans. A, a lot of these breeds that exist at the moment and may have the kind of issues you're talking of, they, they only exist because of human intervention. We chose to breed them to be in that way. And is it really ethical that we can continue to breed animals that might have problems? I, I don't think that's a, necessarily a, a good thing to do. Um, a lot of horses that you breed um, won't have problems. Uh, my first pony, bless her heart, she lived till the age of 32. Um, and yeah, she was, um, she loved her jumping. She was a bit bonkers. I mean, um, despite, despite if they have problems or not, the fact that we're keeping another living being do you not think that's just unethical in itself? Surely they shouldn't be here. Surely we humans should never be keeping horses. Okay. Um, so, yeah, no, I see your point of view. So what would you do with the horses? All the, sorry, horses. I mean, I would propose that we'd stop breeding them. Die out? Um, yeah, the, the domestic species. Um, personally, I think we're spending way too much time on conserving man-made species of animals than we are their actual the wild horses. And I think that we should stop breeding them and we should put more focus on protecting the ones that actually have a, a wild existence and, and, and where they, they should be. Okay, I think, so I think that's where I'd like to see horses in the future. I don't want to see horses owned by humans. I want to see horses free. And in the world where they should be and living a natural okay, so, life. So kind of like the your Dartmoor ponies, your Exmoors, your Mustangs. I mean Dart, Dartmoor ponies as I mean that they're, they're free, but they're not. They're they're all they're owned, Dartmoor ponies. And obviously some of them are slaughtered for meat, unfortunately. A um, lot of them are. 
Yeah. Going so to go to Dartmoor sales, they're a pound, they're they're a guinea a piece. Yeah, exactly. So, but you know, I want to I want to see a situation where the Dartmoor ponies, if we use them for example, they just get on with it. They live out their lives. They do what they want to do. They don't need. I mean, humans can intervene if we want to help them, if we want to give them medical care, if we want to just look out for them and be protectors. But as far as being owned and but it's being very, very active. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. You can carry on, carry on. Um, it's very, very hard to give um, a Dartmoor pony uh, medical care. It might because, be. It... Because they, they, they are, they're a wild animal. They are, but but don't you think that's what they should be? They should be a wild animal. If we can help them, we can help them. But ultimately, I think we need to leave them alone. Um, we need horses to be where they should be, doing their own thing, and us not messing with them. Because, I mean, the domestication of the horse has not done any favours for, for the horse. If we look at all the horses that we've got in, you know, d domesticated, including the ones that my, my, my partner has, they're basically ruled by... By us they go out when we let them out they fed when we feed them their whole life is dictated by us and as much as you know they might get medical care if they're ill or anything like that and we we can be nice to them ultimately they shouldn't be there they should never have been there they should never have been born into this captive existence and that's unethical in itself don't you think okay. um see the horses i know and i'm with uh we don't dictate at all when they go out, when they come in, nothing. Well, I mean, if you're riding them, you are dictating when you decide to ride them. And if you enter them into like a venting or anything like that, you're dictating they partake in these activities. They don't choose to partake in anything like that. Um, I would think, actually, if you see a horse in the, the show ring, that's a well looked after animal. Um, they actually they love performing. But they have no like concept it. of what they're doing. They don't understand what eventing is. Yeah, they do though. I don't think they do. I don't think they have that intelligence to under to understand that on a proper level that they're okay. being showcased. Um, I don't think they, they get that. Here's an example. Um one of my horses, Kez, used to have get colic all the time i don't know if you're familiar with colic yeah one of our horses has, has colic yeah yeah um so one weekend i had the vet out god it was all weekend um it was partial impaction uh so in the end i shouted to my friend who had a horse lorry who came and we took kez for a ride in the lorry not on his back obviously um, we went to extra and back. And the excitement of getting on the lorry is like humans when you get really excited and oh, you want to poo, basically, don't you? And he cleared it all. And as soon as you put most horses, I'm not saying all, oh, but most horses on a lorry, the first thing they do is they have a poo because they're really excited. Well, where are we going? Um, you get them out the show the other end, they have a really good look round. Um, and they're, they're like, they are happy to be there. But I mean, c can you guarantee that they're, they're, they're happy to be there or have they just been put in there and they're just... No, just they are. The situation? No, they're not. No, they are happy to be there. You know, um, I used to show jump, um, I used to cross country, my thoroughbred. Um, he used to love it, absolutely love it. And that's kind of why I fell out of my, um, my niece, who's vegan. She said, oh, but you've sat on his back and you don't know that he likes it. And I'm like, well, if he didn't, he wouldn't be enthusiastic about doing what he's doing but this is this is where we'd go back to the argument of is it just conditioning do they just not know any better and because that's what they've been brought up to 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 do and mm -hmm. they were going to get ridden then okay um my thoroughbred got him 
He was, I think he was eight years old. Um, never particularly been ridden and nobody kind of understood him. And I got to him and he had a lot of um, issues where he was really unconfident with himself. So I actually got out um, a horse whisperer. A really good guy, uh, Ben Hart, actually, who taught us um, the relationship me and Kez had uh, was pretty unique. He was kind of my soulmate, do you know what I mean? Um, so, no, it wasn't conditioned. It was he trusted me and I trusted him. If that it, makes sense. I mean, you know, I, I can understand why, you know, how people can build, you know, uh, trust with an animal and all things like that. Obviously, you know, we have animals and they, they trust us to do different things. <laughs> but if this yeah. comes back to ultimately that argument of we're doing something, all these things, uh, of whether it's racing, eventing, dressage, riding, keeping them even like... <clears throat> it's all completely unnecessary and we're okay what's your well, opinion well i mean I, I don't even think it's just an opinion i think it's more of, a, of an objective fact that mm -hmm. it's it is completely unnecessary there's, there's no need for us to, to keep horses there's no need i don't feel there's any need for us to ride them i don't think there's any need for us to enter them into any sort of competition i mean mm -hmm. that's i mean i don't think there would be there would be an argument that would justify that for the the benefit of the horse in any way. I think that's, that's definitely an, an owner thing. So it seems like, and I, and I don't think people do this to be malicious. Like I'm not saying that I think you're purposefully abusing your horse or anything like that, or you're you know, purposely being horrible to them. But I think we've been brought up into this culture where we see horses for some reason as an animal that should be ridden and we should it's okay to enter them into these competitions and they're like this very unique animal we don't do this to many other animals like how many like i said before how many animals do we ride in the world we really no, don't we don't but let's look at crofts let's look yeah, but at i don't agree with crofts either like there's, there's, there's a lot of ethical issues not, with crofts the, the the, the, the yeah. breeding especially um oh yeah don't get me started yeah, th 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 there's a lot of things, and I think you know there are there are parallels between stuff like crufts and all the other the equine um, sports and, and agility things as well. You know, I, I don't think any of these things are, are necessary, and I think they're they're only really done for the benefit of the human. Um, because why would the horse need it? Which is what I come down to. And if the horse doesn't need it, and we know we can't get a definite consent, then I feel that we're we're taking advantage of them for our own good, which I think is unnecessary. Like, I think people should look after horses. We've got horses here. Uh, I very much encourage people to rescue animals. If there's a horse sanctuary and there's some horses that need homes, or by all means, I'm up for people rescuing them and looking after them. But I think it's the mindset that I think people need to get out of, of that we can get a horse so we can ride them. And we can get a horse so we can show them, you know, and it should be, we're going to get a horse yeah, because so we want I've, to help I've, them. I've got, I've got a, a friend who's got a horse called Profit, who has had like back issues, this, that and the other. The old owners were actually um, about as useful as a chocolate teapot. Um, so she's she's got this little grey mare now. She's not ridden. She's a mm. pet. Um, yeah. that 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 suits the pony that does suit the pony um but there's other animals out there uh, sorry horses yeah that they um it's like an athlete really but not uh, this is where i disagree because what i think of which i said earlier is i think a lot of the time when people are kind of under the assumption that horses need to have all this riding and extra exercise it's because they want to use them for a certain purpose they want to use them for racing they want to use them for dressage they want them to use them for these things where part of that is that this horse is to a very high level of fitness but they don't necessarily need that level to just live a happy and healthy life I think that's something that we dictate on them because we want to use them for a certain purpose. Would you not agree with that? No. 
No. Um, I've named many a horse that hasn't been ridden, has got laminitis, rotation of the pedal bone, etc., and has to be unfortunately put to sleep. But I'd say again that I'd say again that that's anecdotal. Like I said, I've had 187 replies in a, a Facebook group about people that don't ride their horses, all saying our horse is absolutely fine and healthy. Yeah, but with all due respect, that's gonna be kind of biased because of I mean, um, but wouldn't I you say but wouldn't, but, but wouldn't you say that your side is biased because you uh, you enjoy no, riding? It's only, it's only me. No, but, you, but you enjoy riding, so you would have a you would have a bias towards wanting to do these activities, right? If I have the right horse, I would ride them. If I've got a horse that I just want to, or it wants to be shown in hand, then that is what would happen. Yeah, I'd but never, I would never force a horse to be ridden. Okay, but if if so, okay, it, 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 as a hypothetical. If I could, if I could outright prove to you that horses didn't need riding, would you stop riding? Yeah, yeah. You would. You said they. I'm sorry, I've got kitten carnage going on here. Sorry, they're rampaging. No, that's that's okay. No worries. I'm used to. Well, I'm used to having animals around the house, so I, I can understand that. I've got foster kittens. And, uh, we, yeah. We've got eight eight rescue cats here so <laughs> yeah i know what it's like to have lots of cats running around so not a problem yeah. i might put the light on actually can you bear with me two seconds yeah yeah of course not a problem fine um just to put out there if anyone in the chat has any questions you want to ask uh feel free i can always pass them on as well if anyone wants to ask anything um so, so yeah just so just to confirm if if i could get you the evidence that they they didn't need you would you would stop riding your horse uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's a reasonable. I, I, I respect that. That is yeah. a thing. So, 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 would you say just to just to confirm your your position then? So, you ride Sorry, your horse. No, no, that's not fine. So, just to kind of confirm your position at the moment, you ride your horse because you feel that your horse requires riding, and that is the only reason you ride your horse. Is that correct? Um. It's down to health. It's down to weight. Um, I know you said uh, earlier in the conversation that um, if you've got a big enough field, you put uh, food there, and then the other side you put water, so they walk across. That's not going to keep a horse uh, fit and healthy. I mean, maybe not that alone, but, I mean, this would go into – what I was saying about the domestication of of horses anyway and the position they're in, because the fact that they're being kept in environments where they aren't given enough room to be able to do some of their natural things, like have a proper run around and, and do those things, I would say is an ethical concern in itself. Uh, and so the fact that we're looking when, after... When you've got like 10 acres, et cetera, and that's plenty of room. Um, it was very interesting, actually, because you sent me the link of the horses running around in the field. Yeah. At the sanctuary. And it did actually say um, horses in their new pasture for the first time. Maybe. But I've seen animal. I've seen horses run around in their normal pasture down at the livery yard all the time. So it's not something that's just happened in that one video that was just one i found but i i see it all the time they they run around and they play and you know one of our horses is always you know playing up with the other horses and everything so that's yeah that's not something that's just unique that's, to being that's in a new field quite unusual because um i would say that's quite natural wouldn't you say it's natural for if horses are together that they're going to play and interact surely they interact, obviously, with the grooming, um, all that sort of thing. If a horse is very happy within its environment, they just basically say hi to their mates and they get their head down and graze. If a horse isn't happy or is spooked, that's when they will they will hoon round. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, this is the thing, though. I, you know, like. I, I don't think that's right. I don't think horses just stand around and just 
Grays all the time. But they they do clearly play, and I, I mean, I've I've seen them do it. So it's a bit hard for me <laughs> to kind of just say, oh, they were spooked or they were this. Like, you know, sometimes horses just want to, you know, have fun with with the other horses. And you know, l like like the the wild horses. I know you you say that that they're different, but really the domestic horse should have less issues with levels of fitness because the wild horses have got huge amounts of space to run but the, the domestic one um, horses don't need to search for their food or anything like that so they're not going to move as much anyway and they're also their diet is controlled it's so, a completely different diet if you've got um let's say the Dartmoor or the Exmoor pony right that's a completely different diet because horses um, they forage. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've got, um, I don't know, five acre field with grass, then the horse is just gonna have a good grub on that, basically. Yep. Yeah. And they don't have to go as far. Whereas if you've got your Dartmoors, your Exmoors, your Mustangs. Um, do you know why Mustangs never grow over like 14 hands, 14 two? I know I don't. Because they've got such a heavy worm burden. Right. Which basically stunts their growth. Uh, oh, hold on. Someone wants to ask a question. I don't know if you can see this on the screen. I can read out to you. She, but she didn't answer the question of whether she rides for any reason other than for the health of the horse. I'd be interested to hear a yes or no answer and a yes or no answer without a mention of breeds and laminitis. Okay, no, it's for both of us. It's for both of you. So you do do it actually because th that would come into what we you know, talking when you're saying about you do, you know, uh, enter these horses into competitions and things like that. I mean, surely there's no benefit to the horse to do this. And that's completely on you and what you would like to do with that animal. Okay. How, how could um, that be health reasons? How is, how is a horse, horse is health benefiting from being entered into a show? Um, okay. Um, that is, Yes, uh, that is for a lot of me, yeah, but then on the other hand, I wouldn't take a horse to a show if it wasn't healthy, confident, and enjoyed what it was doing. But don't you think that taking horses into the, I mean, it, it, the situation that horses are in currently is extremely unnatural as it is. I mean, they shouldn't be in these captive fields in in stables do you think taking them to events where there's a lot of people potentially noise lights things that are abnormal to them um it's not the kind of situation we should put them in when they, you know, they shouldn't really be there see lights noise all that sort of thing that's not abnormal to them but is that just because you've taken them enough where they have learned to just accept that? Not necessarily because they like it. They just know that that's the situation and they can't do anything about it. No, it's not that they've just uh, accepted it. It's because you have grown their confidence. Because if you had a horse, let's... let's um. Uh, say my um my little thoroughbred um he was so happy he was born up on a farm so he was so happy around tractors and everything um and he used to actually be out with bullocks so to take him to an agricultural show we was he was he was fine he was absolutely happy and because that's how he grown up yeah that's what i mean it's kind of like they've had to be taken to this alien environment to get used to it initially but re really really no, no he was he, he was brought up on a farm but if you're but if you're taking them to shows 
surely that's yeah, a, a different he environment. Already. He was completely used to it already. He was brought up on a farm. He was out of bullocks. He was even stayed with bullocks in a barn. So for him, that was just like, that was nothing. That was like a, that was completely normal to him. And that was his natural behaviour. And I mean, we were, we're, yeah, we're going to admit that there may be some horses that are brought up into an environment that are maybe used to it because maybe that's just the environment they, they were brought up in. You know, the question yeah. still remains that if, you know, why are we putting them into these environments in, in the first place when it's, it's, it's unnecessary? Surely if we are to care for a horse, all we should be doing is providing the, the basics of what they need to be happy and healthy and kind of just leaving them alone and letting them have as you know, a free life as possible with as little interference from us as, as, you know, as necessary. I mean, we should just be taking care of them if they're ill or anything like that. But as far as entering them into shows or using them in any way for our own enjoyment or anything like that, that just seems like something that isn't necessary and is only done for, for us. The horse doesn't need it. You know, it's, the horse ain't going to care if it never goes to another competition in its life. You know, it, it all it wants to do, let's be fair, if horses is it wants to just do its thing, whether that's stand around, eat grass, play with some other horses and sleep, because that's what horses do. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I, I can see your opinion on that. And there's then other horses that, really enjoy getting out um they enjoy being ridden and um having fun and i mean do you think that for example horse horses being ridden for example just to go back to that a sec, do you think that the horse if they do show enjoyment riding do you think this is mainly due to the fact that their environment that they're kept in isn't stimulating enough in the first place so that the riding is mm -hmm. giving them that extra stimulation which really should be provided for them would you agree that that is a possibility that that could be the case no no i mean uh, uh we have like uh, big toys in the field for the horses I don't know if you've seen like the massive like um exercise balls. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen them play with those and yeah. Yeah, those in. So they've got loads and loads of stimulation. Um when they're in the stables, they've got uh, like treat balls. Um, which is like a hexagonal kind of ball with a hole in it. Yep. So you put some peanuts and stuff in yeah, so they nose it around and yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so, no, if they're excited about going out, that's not because they're bored within their uh, home environment. It's because they enjoy going out. But don't you think they could go out without being ridden? You could quite easily walk them. You're not going to get their, their, their muscle tone up. You're not going to get their heart well, rate up. But what, why do why do they need to be getting their all, all this up? Like I, I, this is where it kind of comes back to where's where's the evidence that they need this additional exercise, and and, and where's the evidence because that they, they of, can't get that doing other things? Because they would get over fat and then get laminitis or maybe colic, etc. I, I think this is the area where we're, we're definitely going to disagree because from the evidence I've seen, the ho horses, you know. Lunging can get the heart rate up. Long lining can do yeah, the heart, lunging. heart rate up. So would, you, would you like to just run around in a circle for half an hour every day? In I, a mean, I, know, but, I mean, this is just one one example. I'm not saying this is the sole thing anyone should do. I don't think they yeah, should. Yeah, but like you see, lunging, it's like you just run them around in a circle. But you could easily run them around the field. <laughs> you can play with them. You can do, you know, they, they will play with each other as well. It's the thing. I, I don't see any evidence. And I don't think you, you've managed to pr provide any evidence that they do that's require fine. it. And, and I think that's where we're going to get stuck because in, until there no, no. is any, yeah. Absolutely. Does... Fine, completely agree. Um, but lunging, chasing around the field, um, you shouldn't exercise or, sorry, run a horse, chase it around its own 
field because that's their safe environment. And if you're chasing a horse, a horse is a fight or flight animal. Correct. So if you're going um, to make them run, oh yeah, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, some that, people are built up. That's taking them out of their. I would, I would agree. I would agree with that. But there are people that have built up a good relationship where they, they play. And it's not so much you're forcing them to run or anything like that. They, you just have a good interaction between yourselves. And there's, yeah, there's, there's plenty of videos of people doing that. How, okay, uh, playing. How would you describe that then? Or oh, playing. Making them run? Well, I mean, you could do that. You said you got the big ball. You could be rolling the ball around with them and they could be chasing the that, ball. Yeah, that doesn't get their heart rate up. But you, you, you haven't provided happen. why they need to be getting their heart rate up this much to be to remain healthy. <laughs> to keep them fit and healthy. But why are they not going to be fit and healthy if you're controlling their diet and you're not overfeeding them, and because they're still walking around, just running give around? Them, the time. Uh, if you're just giving them kind of like a, a grass-based diet, say grass, yeah, uh, it's a bit like humans, really. Some have got. Fast metabolisms, some have got slow metabolisms. Then there's things like Cushing's disease, all that sort of thing. Yep. So they, they have to be uh, kind of monitored. So you can give a horse, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a um, <coughs> excuse me, a complete grass-based mm. diet in a massive field. And it still might need additional feeds. Don't what forget, a, you have to have their teeth done twice a year, or that sort of thing. Because otherwise, about things like, what about things like track systems and stuff though that can encourage the horses to be moving more and moving around and all that kind of stuff? Tra sorry, track systems. Yeah. What's you know, that? Where you can basically create a, a track, can't you, in the fields that kind of go to different areas. You know, some of the, some people even put in like water so they can go in the water. They put food in different places and they literally walk around the track with different environments and stuff for them. Never heard of track systems? Never heard of track systems, no. Okay, it might be something you might want to have a look up. As, yeah, some horse riders. And again, that's, that's, not getting their, that's not getting their heart rate up. That's, they're going to poodle from. I don't, I don't see why they, they need to get that, that heart rate up if they're on a, a good diet and they're, they're moving. Like it's not it's not like a necessity to for health. I think that getting the heart rate up is to build additional muscle and things for more uh, extreme uses of of the animal. A lot of it is to do with weight issues. But the thing, if it's weight issues, then we need to control their, you know, need to control their pasture. Food. Yeah. Pasture. Okay. So okay. So restrict their pasture. So then they go on a, a small paddock with a bucket on their nose, which is limit very limited grazing them. Which is this so is the thing. This, this, getting a couple of strands of of grass. The the thing is these issues go back to the whole ethical thing of keeping horses in the first place. If we're having to do these things and we can't look after them in a, a correct way where we're having to do these things that are completely unnecessary for them, then it just begs the question, why, why are we even keeping horses in the first place? Why are we continuing to breed them? Why are we encouraging others to become, get into horses? Surely, if anything, we should just be saying to people, stop breeding. Let's look after the ones that are here to the best of our abilities. And then once they're gone, they're gone. And we don't need to put them back into captivity. Okay. Because I, I, all I see the, these all these things that you're, you're bringing up, if you know, if they did happen, would be because they're not kept in a good environment. I think if if a horse well, is given enough space, not kept in a good environment. It's because these things happen with horses. Well, they they are. I mean, th think about it. A horse should not be kept in a stable in the middle of a town. That's not where a horse should be. Is I've it? never uh, had a horse kept in a stable in the middle of a town. Well, you know what? A lot, a lot of them are. You know, and I'm not saying, you know, obviously livery yards are all over the place, you know, but like... Right, I, I live the, in the, Devon, the, same as you, so I've never seen a horse yeah, in a livery yard in a town. Okay, well, maybe not. But what I'm saying is they shouldn't even be in livery yards. These horses should be out in roaming fields free. They shouldn't be... They, they shouldn't have stables. 
you know, where they're, okay. they're, they're put in for the night or anything like that. They shouldn't have a set a bit of land that that's the only thing they're allowed to run around in. Like, that's a problem in itself. These are not free animals. They're captive. Okay. As much as it's a horrible thing to think, we've got to yeah. be realistic. They're captive animals that have been bred so, into uh, captivity. Yeah, no. So, yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah they have been. So, um, what would you do with horses? Uh, winter gets really cold. Leave them shivering in a field, the ones that well, no. can't cope. I mean, I mean, this, this is the thing. You've, we've got to do what we can for them. And if they're shivering cold, we might have to put them in a stable and keep them warm. That should be a well, duty no. to look you, after. Yeah. You would bring them in. You would rug them. Yeah, but but realistically, they sh they shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be having to do that. <laughs> like, okay, so, all right. So let's um let's call a bit of time on this. Um, sorry, I've got kittens running everywhere, and I've got others to feed. Okay, um, no, yeah, not a problem at all. But, no, but what would what would you do? So what would you suggest going forward now? Oh, well, well, for, for horses, what, what do I think should, is a solution? Uh, yep, for, yep, for horses, what do we do okay. now? Okay, right, so... Right this minute, as from tomorrow, what do you think we should do? Okay, so what, what I personally think we should do, first off, I think we need to um, get people's mindsets changed to that these horses aren't here for, for our use. We should be looking after the ones that are here because we've created the, them. That's, we're the reason they're here. We They need to be looked after, and I think we have a duty to do that that's the least we can do for them is make sure that they're that they're, they're looked after and, and and kept so and you know obviously eliminate this that they need to be used for whatever reason whether it's for showing for thing being for riding whatever you know and an education on how they can be looked after the best if there were situations which i would agree with if there was a situation where for some reason the only way this horse could be exercised and get a, the right nutrition and everything would be that they had to be ridden. Maybe they were living in a small, very small paddock and the only places they could be walked was very busy roads and it was a safety concern to do it. Then I might go, okay, it's for the best of the horse. But outside of that, I think that should stop. Um, as far as breeding, I think we should stop breeding them. Uh, we should stop bringing more horses into captivity. Um, we can't even look after all the ones that are here. There are plenty in rescue centres with no homes. And I don't think we should bring more in when we can't even look after the ones that are here. And I, yeah, I can actually completely agree with that because yeah. um, um, I'm in the showing world and obviously uh, uh, a lot of them that I show and I'm involved in are actually Welsh section a's right and all these top breeders some bloody good breeders but every year they're turning them out and they're breeding and they're breeding and they're breeding now most of these uh ponies they will have a couple of years um success in hand so not ridden in the show ring where do they go from there? Mm -hmm. They are surplus to requirement. Yeah, and yeah? this happens there's a only, lot. Yeah, yeah, there's there's only two. Uh, there was a pony that I actually took on, and I showed him very successfully in hand, and then he's gone on. Um, it's a small child, and he's doing his cross country, his pony club stuff, everything. Brilliant. And then there's another one, Little Fizz. Actually, I showed her a uh, Royal Bath and West. And she's gone on. She's got a, a little girl jockey. And she's doing loads of just, like, fun stuff. But a lot of them, yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Because they are then, they've had their worst. Then they're slow to requirement. Yeah, and this so, is yeah, no, like, this is another part of the on that front. Yeah, and th that's another part of the the attitude towards horses that people have. They see them as d disposable. The fact oh, that you know w one of the horses that w we have has had eight owners is kind of you know yeah. proof of that. I mean, no, yeah. if someone takes on an animal, they should take them on for life. They should not be yeah. passed around and you know just yeah. because they they don't do the job that they want them to do. But yeah, oh, to, I, 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 I spent thirty two thousand pounds trying to save my thoroughbred, my little Kez, mm. and nobody wanted him because he was a bit bonkers. And then we had this complete rapport, 
and we had so many, many happy years and he went lame and 32 grand. Yeah. Yeah. And so expensive. many people are like, well, well, just, just like shot him. Yeah. That's what, yeah, yeah. It, it, it happens way too much. So, so yeah. So, yeah. So just to kind of summarize, what I think is what we need to do, to be honest, is we need to start to move away from the, the domestic horse, um, you know, and look at how we can help the, the horses that are out there in the wild and protect their areas and create a, a oh, it's a very cute little cat, <laughs> you know, and create a, a good future for for you know for horses. I don't want I don't want to see horses in fifty years time still being considered human property i don't think that's an ethical thing in itself you know we should never own other beings we should learn from the past we've done stuff like that in the past and obviously it's not, not you're obviously to um you're a vegan aren't you yeah I, i've been an animal rights activist for the past seven years yeah no that's yeah. fine that's fine i yeah, respect um, you respect your opinion and cool well i guess you know th that's kind of my point of view it's, it's you know I, I appreciate you coming on i'd like you to yeah. you know ha have, have your last say as well if there's anything else you wanted to Express it not all, really. Or? It's been a really nice chat. Like I said, I don't want mud slinging and. Oh, oh, no, I'm, I'm glad we managed to have a proper My chat. Opinion, your opinion and yeah. Okay, well, like I said, I will. Maybe I'll send you the link to the non-ridden equine group, and maybe uh -huh. you can join there yeah. and see what they're saying and see whether it changes your opinion. I'll be interested to know whether whether it does. Yep, and maybe and maybe if it does, we can have another your... one of these chats and we can yeah, see, absolutely. see, see, see um, what yeah, you learn. Tell me the details of um, your uh, girlfriend's parents, the horses they've got and their breeding and why they're not ridden. And Well, I know, I, know, I know they're not ridden because one of them has very bad mental health problems from being abused. Um, th mm -hmm. That's the one that's yep. had eight, eight, eight owners. And... Yep. The other one's just, he's just an old boy now. I don't know how long he's going <laughs> to last. But, yeah, I mean, he's not been ridden for years, though. So one of them's an old boy, retired. I know, but, but, but that's, I, I'm not basing... Like my mouse was mental health know, but, but I'm yeah. not basing my argument on those two horses. No, 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 basing, that's fine. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'm not saying just because they're not ridden, that's the proof that all horses can't be ridden. I'm going on the, you know, the, the, the opinions and the, the evidence I've seen from the, the general non-riding horse. Yeah, and I've yeah. had to have two horses shot, one, well, both because of mental health issues, and they couldn't be ridden, and so massively obese, um, colic and laminitis. So, yeah. yeah, horses for courses, shall we say. Okay, well, look, I really appreciate you you coming on and everything, and then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you some links and everything, and, yeah, re really glad we could finally have a proper face-to-face. -face. Absolutely. Take care. Stop. Cheers, Chris. Okay. Yeah, we'll speak to you again. Right, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, right. So just back with me. So, um, yeah, anyone want to express any uh, opinions or anything of maybe what you thought of the debate? Um, you know, did anyone side with any uh, one part of the argument or anything? I'll be interested to know. I'm not going to stay on for too long because um, Ellie, uh, Vegan Gaze, is going to be um, doing a live stream in about five minutes. So <laughs> I'm going to send everyone over to her, but we can have a, a very quick chat here. So let's have a look at some of the comments, because I'm sorry, I've been fairly ignoring a lot of what people have been saying. Um, so what are you saying here? You're saying uh, it comes down to owning a business that exploits and profits from sentient beings. I don't know if she runs a business to do with horses, but I mean, as far as competitions and stuff like that i mean obviously that would be as she had freely admitted for for her her own benefit um what's this comment here we don't want respect we want people to respect the animal's rights to bodily autonomy yep which is exactly right as animal rights activists ultimately you know i i'm not here to be to be liked i'm not here to to, to make friends you know as much as i do make friends you know i'm here to obviously speak up for the animals and you know do justice to them so yeah definitely isn't a um you know anything for kind of popularity or anything like that um see what other ones we've got so louis is saying i don't respect her exploitation or opinion so louis definitely not swayed um by anything that she said there uh horses are not property nor vehicles says Bo. um Bo also said a lot of horses end up in the meat industry when owners are done for them or they 
don't forget to expectations. Very, very true. Obviously, there was a big meat scandal in the UK, wasn't there, which um, a lot of people kicked off about, which is hypocritical if they're eating other animals. So what's wrong with eating a horse? Uh, <laughs> um, did you just say binned off a penny off horse and show or not? She didn't. She was saying about there were situations in uh, eventing where they um, people do do that. They use them for for a purpose and then they get rid of them, which is very common. And again, one of the reasons which I think, you know, the whole ownership of horses and horse domestication is problematic because it's just, these are the kind of things that, that happen. Um, you know, it's, it's a very common thing, unfortunately. Um, let's see what other ones we've got here. Uh, what's this person say? Helen. She should check out Joa Berger, aka Mustache from on Insta. He runs a place of his cows through the woods and meadows and colors them. No riding. <laughs> he has a sanctuary. I'm glad he's not riding the cows. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to go check out that one there. Um, yeah. And Matthew, I think, nailed it on the head here. Isn't the main question why domesticate them in the first place? Exactly. I mean, all these other things we're talking about, riding and all these other things. Um, you know, that they're all just uh, a problem caused by domestication in the first place. You know, we need to move away from you know, keeping animals, thinking that we can own other living beings. Like, that just isn't ethical in itself. Like, you know, that needs to stop. And once that stops, all these other problems stop, to be fair. Um, what's this one saying here? Canada sadly breeds and exports horses for meat to Asia by plane. They're putting tiny crates on the plates. I think I've seen a photo of that, actually. I'm pretty sure I've actually seen a, a, a photo of, yeah, all these horses on a plane, which is quite quite scary, isn't it? Um, well done, very respectful. Yeah, th thanks. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad people, I've got a few people here saying, um, thank you for staying calm and rational. I mean, as anyone knows, I, I do these debates all the time. Um, I'm, I'm used to chatting to... To people and normally if people are you know wh whether i agree or you know, or disagree with people as long as people are civil happy to have a civil conversation with them obviously if people start talking shit i will call them out <laughs> some people might have seen previously but if people are being kind nice even if i think they're talking rubbish then i will be respectful and at least you know you know and the thing is you'll notice it, I, I like to at least let them say their piece even if i don't agree which to be honest a lot of the things she was saying, um, I didn't, I don't agree with. I think there was just uh, there was a lot of anecdotes in there rather than actual evidence. Um, I still like people to be able to at least say their side, so that no one could ever say that you know I didn't allow anyone to talk and it was very one-sided or anything like that. I like people to at least say it and then let you, the audience, make a decision on whether you think what was said um, was rational and reasonable. Um, so yeah, I hope you you, you appreciate that that there. Um, Louis is saying he uh, he gets triggered just watching. Oh, no, I know I do see you getting a bit of a rant there, Louis, every now and then, <laughs> and that, which I, I understand. It, it it is it is frustrating. Um, and I think one of the big things with the the horse thing, especially, it's it's a little bit like the meat eating. I would compare it to that. It's we we've been brought up culturally, I think, to think that horses are this kind of random animal that we ride and it's, it's kind of, it's, it's normal. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like the eating meat, normal, natural, necessary. I mean, I don't know natural, but necessary. Um, yeah. Normal. Definitely. It would, it would, it would apply those arguments. Obviously it's, it's not, shouldn't be normal and it's definitely not necessary, but you get what I'm saying. I'm just kind of repeating myself now. So, right, we will leave it there unless anyone's got any last questions. I'm just going to check if Vegan Gaze has started her stream because I think you should all go over there and support Ellie. She's um, uh, with Catherine Klein. Oh, she, they haven't started yet. So I'll wait until they start and we can we can get everyone to jump over. So, yeah, if anyone's got any other last questions, we've got 19 of you in here. Um, I am happy to, to answer anything if there's anything left to go but um also um you know I, I will try and do more videos i know i've been a bit slack and i seem to just come on when i do debates but i've been super busy um but yeah if people are enjoying this I, I will try and try and do more um so what's bo saying here horseback riding sounds benign to most people until you learn more about it when i was first went vegan it never occurred to me 
Yep. Uh, thanks to Bite Size Vegan's video I learned better. Yep. Bite Size Vegan does have a great video um, on, on the subject. So definitely go and go and check that out. I'll give you a, a record. And also another person to look up is Ren Hurst. Uh, she's um, does some really good videos on natural horsemanship and stuff. So um, you should definitely check her. Um, oh, I'll tip you for your trouble. Thank you, mate. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. You don't have to, but um, thank you very much. Is Ellie smelly? Um, I mean, I have been near Ellie and there was a little bit of a, a stink. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's too much broccoli, too much flatulence. Who knows? <laughs> plant-based news, just tuning in. We've just come to the end of the debate, mate. But um, plant-based news, obviously go and follow plant-based news. Amazing you know, um, resource for anyone who wants to keep up with all the latest plant-based news, as the the name says. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, if it's actually just while, while we're waiting for Ellie, is if there's any um, kind of debates or any subjects you'd like me to talk about, um, let me know. You know, if you give me some ideas for stuff, I might be able to do some more videos. Obviously, I, I think I might do more live streams because they're a bit easier. And um, you have to be quick though, because Ellie has just started. So I'm gonna send all you you lot over there to go and see the um the salad queen herself so here's the link anyway hopefully that will post oh, so vegan gaze stream go and send her my love um the vegan camp out handbag war i don't know about this war but it sounds fun <laughs> what was this war? <laughs> oh, apparently um, Bite Size Vegan is doing a premiere soon as well. She's back. That's really good. Hey, I'm just going to put plant-based news up. Plug plant-based news. So anyway, everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you um, found that educational anyway. Um, um, would your arguments be any less watertight if we required animal protein to survive? <laughs> um if we required animal protein to survive then that would be a different argument but it wouldn't be for horse domestication that would still be unethical so great right um everyone hop over to Cielli. thank you so much for tuning in everyone uh please share this with uh if there's anyone that might be interested in you know seeing this debate or anyone that maybe rides horses and you know maybe they can learn a little bit from it and may see you over um on ellie stream so Yep. Take care, everyone. We'll see you again very, very soon.